So in this section, we are going to talk about the comparison operators and uh, if conditions and for loop and while loop. Uh, what is comparison? Uh, what is comparison operators? Like, for example, if we say one is greater than two, it will return as false because this statement is not correct. But if we say one is smaller than two, then we receive true. It returns as true. If we say one is equal to two, this statement is false because one is not equal to two. But like we can say 10 is equal to 10, then it will return as true because this statement is correct and true. And we can say like nine is not equal to 10, and this statement is true. So it will return as true, but if we put it here 9, because 9 is equal to 9, then this one will be false. These are comparison statements, and we can have two of them together, for example, like that, or, this is or statement, or, like 15 is not equal to 16. Both of these statements are uh, true, it returns true, but even if only one of them is true, then because it is or, it is whether this one is correct or this one is correct, if only one of them is correct, then it will return as true. Uh, normally in C++ for or, we use this sign, but here in the Python, we just normally write down or, and for and, we use and itself and not and not this sign like C++. We just say and. In this case, both of these statements should be true to return true, but because the second statement is not correct, uh, so it doesn't return as true, but we can change it like this one. 15 is less or equal to 16. So this one is true, this one is true, both of them are true, so it will return as true. Then, having said that, we define an if condition, we can say that if, uh, okay, let's say uh, num1 is equal to 10, num2 is equal to like 15, and we say if num1 is less than num2, then column enter, as you can see, because it's a condition, it will start it by one tab. And we don't need to use uh, curly braces here as C++ or MQL9. We just push tab and we start coding and then it would be related to the if statement. So we can say if this condition is true, print as this statement and number one is or number one is less than number two. This is the print this is the print and we can say else if we can use else if with another condition and it is ill if like that and we say if num one is equal to num two then column print it automatically starts the next line with one tab. Uh, print this statement both num Numbers are are equal, and else if none of the above statements are correct, else column, I want to print number one is greater or bigger than number two. This is very simple statements. Just we want to see how if, ill, if, and else statement works. Now, number one is 18. If I press shift and enter, it will say that number one is greater than number two. It should be two here. And if I change it to 15 itself, it says both numbers are equal. And by 14, it will return this one. Number one is less than number two. But we should notice that if 
both of if and ill if conditions are correct, then we only return the if statement here and not ill if. In this um, uh, in this situation, for example, if I add an equal, if number one is less than or equal than number two, and we put it, uh, we change the number one to fifteen, both of them are equal, and the if condition is correct. But because both ill if and if conditions, both of them are correct, uh, we should not see both numbers are equal, but we should see number one is less than number two. I uh, run it again, and as you can see, here number one is less than number two. So it's very important. If both conditions of if, if, and else if are true, only the if condition will run. Now, the second topic is while loop. Uh, we, define a, we define a counter, its uh, initial value is zero, and why we say while counter is less than or equal to five, print counter, or we can say just f the counter to curly braces, and here we just say counter, counter. And now we should plus plus, we should say counter is equal to counter plus one. Or normally, instead of writing it like that, in Python, we just say counter plus equal one, like that. So if I shift and enter, then it will start counting, where it will start this while loop, print this statement here and then add counter by one so we will have zero one two three four and five because this equal is here too this is how the while loop works it's very easy but the most important loop here is for loop because it's very important uh, and it's a little different with what we have in the c plus plus but still it, it it is much more practical i believe uh, in C++, we say for, for example, int i semicolon, as long as i is less than or equal to, for example, 5, i++. plus plus. This is how we write a for loop in C++. It means starts from i equal, for example, 0 initial value. Uh, starts uh, run this loop run this for loop and starts with i0 and then add i by 1 and repeat this for loop as long as i is less than 5. But here in uh, Python, we define for loop like that. We say for i in range and here we have, if I press shift and tab, we have three inputs. First one is step. Sorry, the first one is the beginning of i, and the second one is the end of i, and the third one is the step. What does it mean? It means if I say start from zero and count to 10, and each time for each iteration, add i by one, and we can say print i for us. If I press shift and enter, we can see that it's, it prints i for us, and i first is 0, then it is 1, 2, 3, 4, and until 10, but not included. So it's 0, 2, 10, up to 10, but not included. So 10 is not included here. If I increase this one to 2, it's our steps, we can see that it prints as it, it prints for us 0, 2, 4, 6, and 8, but not 10 itself. We can say starts from 10 to 0, but steps, we want it to be minus 1. If I press Shift and Enter, 10, 9, and until 0, but not included. 0 is not included. This is how we write for loop. But we can say for, for example, uh, I here is just a name. We can say for counter, 
counter and we can do it for example with two r so we know that we can put everything anything here in range just 10. when it's just 10 it automatically consider the uh, start of this for loop zero and the step one you can say just again print this counter so it's exactly the same with the first uh, for loop that we had here because it automatically put the initial values for the starts of the uh, for for the start of the for loop zero and the step one. We can add another print here, for example, and we can say the for loop is over. Again, shift and enter. The for loop is over. Now I want to show you how break and uh, continue works for the for loops. Here, before print the counter, I add an if statement and I say if counter is equal to 5, then column break. What does it do now? So, if I press shift and enter, I can see that it just starts counting from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. But when the counter is equal to 5, it breaks the first for loop that it can see. And in this case, it is this one. And it and it breaks the, these for loops and goes out of the for loop and print that the for loop is over. I copy and paste this one here. But now here, instead of break, I just continue, right? Continue. What would happen if I press Shift and Enter? Here. Now, in this case, it starts counting from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. But when it reaches 5, when the counter is equal to 5, it doesn't break the for loop completely, but it just stops running this for loop only for this iteration where the counter is equal to 5. So that's why we don't see this, this print runs when the counter is equal to 5, when it sees that the counter is equal to 5, it doesn't continue this line. And we don't see this line. So that's why it doesn't print the fifth line. It doesn't print the sixth, actually, the sixth iteration, which is for number 5. This is the difference between break and continue. Break, stop, for loop. But counter, but continue stops the for loop only for the iteration that it sees this continue. Now, we have another type of for loop that uh, it starts doing iteration on a list. Uh, I define another list, my list, and it's equal to uh, my list, and it is, for example, number 10, and it is equal to, again, the names, John, Tim, And Maria, for example, this is our list. This list, I call it. This is our list, but we can say four names, and I put two na two s here because you. I want you to know that we don't have to spell it right. This is just a simple name. You can you can uh, put anything, even like something like that. But it's better to have some meaningful statement here. That's why I say just names and with two S in my list and column. I want to print these names, but in front like that. If I press Shift and Enter, it will print all the items that we have in this list. So. These names is actually our iterable variable. And in the first iteration, these names will be equal to the first item of this list, which is John. And then it run whole over through this for loop to the end. In this case, it just have one print statement here. And when it is finished, it goes back again. And then it, it go, uh, the name will be equal to the second element of this list and to the end. So names will be, so this for loop will run for each of the elements of this uh, list that we have here.
We can write this for loop in another way too. We can say, for example, for uh, i in range len and this list here. What len this list here? I just want to show you something. Okay, I can just say uh, this len my list. If I shift and enter it, it will return us four. It will return us. Uh, then the number of elements that this my list has and here it is one two three four so I can say for I in the range of this it will be it, it means from for I from zero one two three go and run this for loop and we say print this my list and here I want to print the item I first time I is zero so it uh, prints the item 0, then it prints the item 1, and if I shift and enter, it's exactly the same with what we have here. And we can say for uh, counter and comma item enumerate this my list number 10, then print counter and print item okay what does this enumerate do uh, it will print both the index of the items in this list and the item themselves too i can shift and in press shift and enter we can see that first the index of john is printed which is the counter and then the name of John, which is the item, is printed. For the next for loop, first the index of the Peter is uh, printed, and then the item, which is Peter itself, is printed, and uh, like that goes on. So at the end, the counter is three, which is the index of Maria, and the item is Maria itself, which is the last item for this my list uh, ten list. And last but not least, uh, as I mentioned before, strings are really similar to the list. So I can just again define string uh, like 10 and it is equal to hello world or hello world 14. And you can say for character in string 10 if character that is alphabet is true and print this is we can just write here f because i want to add something to our print this is an alphabet character and it is character itself this one so then another if statement if character is numeric and uh, it is true then I want to print if the character is this character variable number and it is numeric so if I press shift and enter we can see that it uh, run this for loop for each character of this hello world 14 and for the first one which is H it says this is the alphabet character and it is H then it says it is E L and until it reaches to this one and four number and here it says that the character is one uh, number and it is numeric or we could just say it is we could just say it is number like that and then it would be I think much better the character is number one and it is numeric so this is how we use for loops in Python it seems a little complicated but it is not and uh, 
while you are working on it, you get used to using it, and you will find it much better and much uh, practical in comparison with C++ 4 uh, and what we had there, how we uh, closed the for loop in C++ or uh, MQL 5 or 4. Here, I believe it's much uh, practical. So, uh, in the next section, we learn how to work with the functions, with lambda, and then we learn how to uh, use object-oriented programming in Python.